b squared minus 3ac. This is, this is the in thing right now. It's so hot right now. So if you have a function that's a quadratic, I'm assuming that we all know what b squared minus 4ac is. It's just, if we do this little check, if b squared minus 4ac, with this being a, b, and c, if it's greater than 0, then this quadratic here has two real roots. And if it's less than 0, the quadratic has no real roots. And if it's equal to 0, then it has one real, sometimes called repeated, more usually called repeated roots. And that's that's pretty basic. We all know this. This is good. It comes, by the way, from the quadratic formula, of course, um, because if you, this is the b squared minus 4ac part, of course, it's called the discriminant. And uh, if that's bigger than zero, then when you square root it, you get some number, and then you plus or minus that, and therefore end up with two answers. If it's zero, then you root zero and get zero. When you plus or minus zero, nothing happens either way, and you just get one answer. When it's less than zero, you can't take the square root of that across the real numbers, and therefore you have no real solutions. So that's pretty cool. We all know that. Uh, when we have a cubic, though, so if we now say f of x is this cubic function, there's no easy check for how many roots this function has. Uh, so essentially, this is just a check for how many roots it has that takes five seconds. There's no equivalent check for this. There is a cubic formula, so you might think, oh, I can look in the cubic formula for the bit under the square root that will tell me. Uh, and then you look at this and you're like, oh, okay, that didn't really work. So instead, though, let's introduce, of course, b squared minus 3ac. What we'll do is we'll differentiate this function, which gives us this. And now this is just a quadratic, right? And so quadratics don't tell us how many, or sorry, the derivative doesn't tell us how many roots something will have. But if we set that derivative to zero, that will tell us where or how many stationary points it has. So if f dashed of x here is equal to zero, that tells us where the stationary points are. And that's pretty cool because, like I said, this is a quadratic. So I think I can just do a discriminant on this. And the discriminant is going to be 2b all squared minus 4 times 3a times c. That would be the discriminant of this, which, of course, simplifies to this. Oh, sorry, this there. And I can factorize out a 4 from that and get this here. And so that's the discriminant of f dashed of x. When f dashed of x is 0, that's stationary points. So if this is greater than 0, then I'll have two stationary points. If it's equal to 0, I'll have one stationary point in this original cubic. And if it's less than 0, I'll have no stationary points on the cubic. And that's pretty cool because, of course, now I can just divide all of this by 4 because 4 is just a positive number, so it's not going to change any of this. And I can end up with my b squared minus 3ac rule. And that's pretty cool. So b squared minus 3ac tells us how many stationary points a cubic equation has. And you might think that's not amazingly useful. And maybe you're correct. Maybe it's not. I just think it's pretty cool. It does have some use, though, I guess, because if you look at a cubic, say, so here's a cubic. Do the b squared minus 3a check right now. Just be careful, of course. b is 0 here because b refers to the x squared coefficient. So you just get minus, and then this is uh, c, and this is a, just 1. So you just end up with minus uh, 6, I believe, when you, when you get that. So minus 6 means that this shouldn't have any stationary points, and it doesn't. And likewise, this one, uh, probably you know this one, but b squared minus is 3ac, it's just going to be uh, minus, uh, so, so b is 0, and then this is going to be uh, minus 3 times a times c, but c is 0 as well, so it's just going to be 0, of course, the b and the c are 0. Um, so it's going to have one stationary point, as this rule here predicted. What's quite cool about that, though, is if a cubic has no stationary points, if it just flexes like this, or even if it just has one stationary point like this, it will only ever have one root, right? Because all you can really do, just think about moving this graph up and down, right? This will be a repeated root, but that's okay. It, it only has one actual root. And so we can actually come up with this rule here. If b squared minus 3ac is equal or less than zero, the original cubic only has one root. Now, if b squared minus 3ac is greater than zero, you're in a bit of a pickle because it means you've got two stationary points, remember, and you could have three roots, you could have just one root if the two stationary points are below the axis, or you could even just have two roots where one of them is repeated here. So you actually don't learn anything really if b squared minus 3ac is greater than zero, but it's cool to know that it would be a super quick check to find cubics that only have one root. You could just use this super quick check, less root to zero, and it only has one root. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, it, it, if it turned out to be greater than zero, of course, you would have to assess where those stationary points were to learn how many roots it has. But anyway, um, thank you for watching, and I uh, will see you next time. Apologies for not posting a video in a while.